and with this Arctic air blasting through the upper Midwest, feeling the frigid temperatures is International Falls, Minnesota, the second coldest place in the country right now. And that's where we find our own Mike Seidel braving this bitter cold. Mike, the coldest place in the country is not too far from where you are. So you are literally in the Arctic cold. And where, where is that? Is that in Barris, Minnesota, Tower, Minnesota? Do tell, Jen. Great time. I mean, what's the other place? Big Fork, right? Big Fork, yes. Big Fork is the coldest. But look, you're close. I, I'd say you get bragging rights. They're minus 15 in Big Fork. Okay. Uh, I can tell you. Now, we've come up a couple of degrees just a few minutes ago, top of the hour. INL now 11 below zero. Little southeast wind there mixing up. Radiational cooling. Yesterday, once the sun went down between five and seven here, it dropped from eight above to five below zero. Uh, this is about as cold as it gets this early in the season. The average low is in the low 20s. So do the mathematics. We're running about 35 degrees below average. But up here, they embrace the cold. In fact, coming up the third week of January, it's the annual icebox days. And part of that includes the frostbite falls open. We started it about three years ago just to raise, get some folks together, raise some money for the local food shelf here in town. Um, it started out fairly small with a half a dozen teams, and now we are plumb full with 18 teams, and uh, it just continues to grow every year. And what we do is we plow off uh, fairways out on the frozen lake surface and uh, punch some holes in the ice. We take the used uh, leftover Christmas trees from the year before and put them out there along the fairways, and we just have a heck of a time. And it... Uh, it tends to be a uh, cold day, as it usually is that time of year up here, but you never can tell. Last year we were playing in slush, so. They don't use golf balls. They use tennis balls. And as Rocky and Bullwinkle used to say, watch me fall a frozen turkey out of my hat. Okay, here's the forecast. Today, we get up to about 20 degrees. The average is 38. All weekend, we stay just below freezing. And, Jen, by Monday, we will finally get above freezing here in International Falls. And the locals, without exception, are saying this came on too quickly. Uh, they like to ease in the winter. Even, even they are surprised about how much snow is on the ground and sticking around. They tell me usually the first snow melts away. This morning, six inches on the ground. They've had over 13 so far. That's interesting, Mike, to see if they'll keep that snow all the way through the season. All right, Mike Seidel, we'll check back in with you. Meanwhile, we've got this Arctic air on the move into the northeast. Moves off to the east. That high pressure is to blame for a lot of problems this morning. Not only the cold and the snow, but also the windy conditions. Let's go to International Falls, Minnesota. That is where we find huh? our own Mike Seidel, who's braving the bitter cold temperatures. Mike, you know, in International Falls, I was there years ago. I'm talking like 15 years ago. And I swear, in the dead of winter, these people were just wearing their shells. You know, like, oh, this isn't cold. Is 13 below zero and a high of only 12? Is that considered cold yet? for these people? Uh, it is. This early in the season, it hit pretty hard. And the fact that it stayed cold now for over a week and that the snow has not melted, usually the first snow melts. Mayor Bob Anderson joins us bright and early this morning, especially uh, in the central time zone. And you just told me you choose to live here in the icebox of America. That's a great, exactly right, uh, Mike. Uh, Certainly, uh, every, everyone that is here has made a choice to live in International Falls, and it's, uh, it's a great living. How about this early uh, uh, winter uh, blast? Well, uh, we've seen some of this before in life, but uh, yes, uh, this year I think we're getting a little payback for last year's nice fall. Yeah, last year was the warmest November on record. Now up here they embrace the cold with the outdoor winter sports, and the big event coming up in a couple of months in January is the annual Icebox Days. Yes, the Freeze Your Gizzard Blizzard Run uh, will be happening here, and uh, <laughs> folks will be uh, challenging the elements. And tell us a little bit more about the Icebox Days. Who shows up? How many people participate? Well, we have uh, hundreds that will be in the, uh, the 10K race. And uh, as well, uh, we have some frozen turkey bowling and smoosh racing and just a lot of events that uh, are a lot of fun out here in the cold. And, and you have to admit that the summers up here are just fantastic. They are. And in fact, uh, you know, we have very warm days and very cool evenings. And that really makes it very pleasant. Yeah, and, and frost on your windshield in June is always, is always exciting. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, Mayor, thanks for joining us uh, up here in International Falls. And stay warm. I know you know how to stay warm. Okay, Steph, from the icebox of America where it has warmed up to 11 below zero this morning, back to you. Yeah, I mean, Mike, seriously, the guy had like a light jacket on, no hat, no, you know, earmuffs. Come on, Seidel. We need to thicken up your blood. Ugh, Jen.
No, Steph, I mean, Sad I showing. was thinking the exact same thing, though, actually, about the mayor on no, no hat, just a jacket. Yeah, and it was yeah. light. It wasn't even that thick. Yeah. All right, but they did. He did say, and we've heard from from Seidel that folks are saying this is early, right, to get this cold, this brutal cold, and it's just entrenched across the Midwest. We see a few more snowflakes there. All right, a quick shot of Arctic air is just blasting us in the upper Midwest. And one place feeling the frigid temperatures is International Falls, Minnesota. That's where we find our own Mike Seidel. Mike, you guys have been breaking records um, nonstop. It seems like anything new. Uh, we can tell you about the records first from yesterday. Look at this. We did a two for this doesn't happen very often. We set a record low max um, a, and a record high low. So here we go. Take a look. The high yesterday was only 12 above zero. And then by midnight last night, we were 13 below zero. So a record low and a record low max temperature. And so at 13 below at midnight, we break the record for today, November 10th. Right now downtown, we're down to uh, four below zero, but the official temperature out at the airport, out there in the woods where they've got great radiational cooling with the snowpack and light winds right now is 12 below zero. And this city is used to sub-zero cold. Look at this. We average here in the International Falls 60 mornings in a season below zero. And look at that. 20 below zero. We average nearly 20 mornings. The locals here, a little surprised and uh, a little unhappy about how quickly it got cold here in International Falls this season. I'm cold. Uh, I'm bringing out the long johns tonight. Um, we've already fired up the stove at home. The dog's really enjoying that. Uh, it'll be early ice for ice fishing. People will love that. Uh, the snowmobiling is going to be early. People eat that up up here. So we're a little surprised it's so early, but we're tough. We'll take it. Yeah, it doesn't really hit this hard this early. We're talking about the coldest early in the season. The average low this morning is 22. So we are 35 degrees below that, Jen, just to put it in perspective. That's significant. Uh, for these folks here in the icebox of America. Truly an icebox yeah. this morning. Mike Seidel, thank you. We'll check in with you. Meantime, this cold is on the move to the northeast. Red blasted with it. Yeah. Well, let's go to Mike Seidel, who's been getting yep. blasted by all this cold air. Uh, very frigid there in International Falls, Minnesota. Mike Seidel, you've been there, uh, you know, for the last day or so. Is this even cold for people there? Because you had the mayor come up to you. I mean, how many layers did you have on relative? Did he even have his gloves on? I don't think he had his gloves on, but you know, he was only out for a couple minutes. I'm out here all morning. So cut me some slack, Abrams. You know, it's cold up here. Hey, the locals are kind of complaining because it's not supposed to be this cold this early. But when it gets cold, they get outdoors. And we've got Ken Kruger, who's the race director for the Arrowhead 135 Ultra Marathon. And this is one of the 50 toughest endurance races in the world. Tell us what you guys go through, guys and gals. We, we hold this race intentionally towards the end of January, the coldest part of the year, the coldest city in the United States, one of the 50 toughest challenges in the world. Um, racers go 135 miles, run, bike, or ski on the Arrowhead Snowmobile Trail, and there's only three aid stations for 135 miles. They have 60 hours to complete it, and they are not allowed any outside help. What about the completion rate, especially when it's uh, bitterly cold? This is our 14th year. Our historic average completion rate is 50%. And this is very well, all the racers are screened before they get in. We only select elite racers. We've had as low as 20% when we had brutal, brutal cold and tough trail conditions. A mild year will be close to 80% finish rate. Okay, and you showed me this. Uh, hold on, hold on to the microphone. And you showed me this. Now, this is what you use when it gets really, really cold. This is what you put on your head, right? That's that's the that's when it's really bad. That's what I would. Well, I want to try this on. I want to see what it looks like and how it feels. So you just put it over your head, huh? Yes. <laughs> now, uh, you're a little crooked here. A little crooked here. How's that look? You're getting there. <laughs> getting there on this one. Okay, so I think this would keep me warm. What you do look, you think, Stephanie? <laughs> you look cross between Freddy Krueger, a duck. Um, what else was there? I don't know the <laughs> scene in the Star Wars movie. Yes, he does. This is unbelievable. Yeah. It's great. I, yes, I, the Reynolds. That's right. Actually, I, he does. I just have one question. I just have one question. Yeah. Where is the closest bank? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. I feel like you need to be talking a different language, that, that thing on your head. Uh, by the way, Jed, I don't even think, is there cash? Does cash exist anymore? I don't think you need to rob a bank, right? No, no, anyway, if you look like that, you're just going to give you cash. So don't worry about that. Mike Seidel, oh, that cracked me up. I, I'm, I'm a cold person. I like to bundle up, but that was extreme. You need factor in the wind, too. Let's go up to International Falls. A quick shot of Arctic air just blasting us right here, although the wind has calmed down, as Mike, Mike Seidel showed us. So, Mike, this morning, out there in the cold, beautiful sunrise, um, but no wind. So there really hasn't been a wind chill factor? Not much, although I just checked the top of the hour. Now back down to 13 below zero, which is as cold as we've seen so far. That was the record yesterday because it hit 13 below at midnight. The wind now three miles an hour, so the wind chill is down to 22 below zero. Now, in the middle of winter in January, okay, that's, that's okay. But here it is, the 10th of November. And I'm thinking two weeks ago, I was standing in 104 degree heat in Los Angeles. So talk about weather extremes. Record yesterday, coldest day. We had a record low max. The high was only 12 versus an average of 38. The low, as I mentioned, 13 below zero. The record low today is six below zero. So we have annihilated that one. And if we can get to 14 below, officially, it'll be the coldest so early in the season. The locals up here have picked up on that. I mean, they, they're used to the cold. You choose to live here. But even the locals are kind of uh, disappointed and upset that it hit this hard, this early, this quick. It's horrible. Um, first of all, I wasn't prepared at all, so I've been doing a lot of shoveling and finding lawn chairs and cushions and beanbag toss games. So, uh, yeah, I'm totally not prepared for it. And uh, come May, we're going to look back on this and be a little bit sad. Yeah, this will get kind of old here in a few days, I think, at least for some of us. It'll be nice to get back to Atlanta where it's going to be 70 degrees warmer tomorrow. I can't tell you the sun's going to come up. We may have a few snow showers later today and tonight. No significant accumulation, but they've had over 13 inches of snow so far, Jen, and they have officially have six on the ground. The other thing they've said is usually the first snow comes in and it melts and it gets back up into the 40s. They may get to 40 by Tuesday. We'll May. see. Jen? But you got six inches you got to melt away, so we'll see. She said May. That it might be before she sort of finds out what's in her yard, right, that got covered with snow. A lot of cold air, and meteorologist Mike Seidel is in International Falls. And, Mike, the transition, it seems as if it was just, you know, we were in spring and then dead of winter. It didn't seem that we eased through this, which is really the most painful, I think. Yeah, the locals are saying the same thing. They've been below freezing now for uh, five or six days. It has not been above 40 now for almost two weeks, and their average high is about 40. So it's cold. Uh, Tricia Heibel is with the Chamber of Commerce. She is the president. And, again, another local who doesn't wear headgear when the wind chills 20 below zero. What, what's the story? How cold does it have to be, Tricia? Well, a little bit colder than this and maybe outside a little bit longer than now, and I would have either have been hood up or headgear on for sure. Well, we've been hanging out at the very nice Coffee Landing Cafe. We got a little show and tell because the coldest it's been in International Falls is 55 below zero, and that's not even the state record. The state record's over in Tower at 60 below, but uh, we got one of these yesterday. This is a sweet-looking uh, pullover kind of a hoodie sweatshirt. The chamber sells our Icebox of the Nation sweatshirts, highlighting that record 55 below, and also some of our other record-breaking temps along right the Right here, look at this. Yes, very, wow, we very could, fun. It's a very little uh, kind of clothing graphic here <laughs> on AMHQ. Take listen there, Miss Carmony. There you go. Look at it. Eight, eight degrees on May 17th, 1926. Unbelievable. Okay, let's but talk about. Yeah, let's talk about the Icebox Days coming up in January. So we're very excited about that. Our 38th annual Icebox Days Festival, January 17th through the 21st. So. Freezer Grizzard Blizzard Run is also happening that Saturday on the 20th, so we're hoping for some good temperatures to keep our festival name active. Yeah, okay, and, and the, the Frozen Gizzard Blizzard Run, that's always, always a catchy title. It is, and it's a mouthful to say at times. Uh, we are excited about the race temperatures. We've never actually canceled the race for cold weather, although over half of the years we've had the race, it has definitely been below freezing. Well, it's, it, it's quite the endurance uh, feat, right, when it's it that is. cold? There was one year in the early 80s that the course did have to be shortened due to some extreme temperatures, but other than that, we run on. Okay, Tricia Heibel with the Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for coming out on this frigid International Falls morning. Stephanie, 
55 below, that's cold. 13 below, eh, we can handle that. <laughs> it's seriously, and I think they also do like bowling with turkey, frozen turkeys also at one of their festivals up there, Jen, in the, uh, in the icebox. You're left. Good morning from International Falls as the sun comes up on a frigid morning, a record-setting morning here in many areas of the upper Midwest. We're talking temperatures down below zero here in International Falls. We dropped to 13 below zero. Right now, we've come back up to six below zero. But keep in mind, the record was six below zero, and we set records yesterday for the coldest record high, min, with only 12 degrees, and then we had a record low yesterday at midnight of 13 below zero. A lot of numbers there. The bottom line is extremely cold for this early in the season, even for the folks here in International Falls. But what they do here, when it gets cold, is they think wintertime sports. The annual icebox days coming up here in the third week of January. So they get outside and embrace the cold and even play golf. We started it about three years ago just to raise, get some folks together, raise some money for the local food shelf here in town. Um, it started out fairly small with a half a dozen teams, and now we are plumb full with 18 teams, and uh, it just continues to grow every year. And what we do is we plow off uh, fairways out on the frozen lake surface and uh, punch some holes in the ice. We take the used uh, leftover Christmas trees from the year before and put them out there along the fairways, and we just have a heck of a time. And it. Uh, it tends to be a uh, cold day, as it usually is that time of year up here, but you never can tell. Last year we were playing in slush, so. We'll see how it shakes out. That's two months from now, the uh, icebox days here at International Falls. Check out the icebox temperatures today. Now, here in the falls, we'll get back up to 20. Yesterday, only 12, but that's still about 20 degrees below average. A chilly day in the Twin Cities. You had a record low this morning, dropping down to 11. Detroit at 30, and St. Louis, a chilly afternoon with sunshine and 42 degrees. And Paul Goodlow, when they play golf out on uh, Rainy Lake, they use tennis balls and not golf balls. I don't know if you'd be a scratch golfer out there, but uh, that's what they do up here in Frostbite Falls, better known as International Falls, unless you're a big fan of Rocky and Bullwinkle like I am. Even today, I still watch Rocky and Bullwinkle. It's all about the moose and squirrel. Mike Seidel reporting this morning from a chilly, a frigid International Falls, Minnesota. Thanks, sir, Mike. Hey, let's... Good morning from International Falls. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel on a record-setting morning, 13 below zero. Yeah, it would be typical in January, but here in early November, 35 degrees below average. The wind chill was down to 22 below zero, but it's on the way up now. Six below, wind chill is running at 13 below zero. The sun is coming up. We may see a few snow showers later on today and tonight as temperatures stay below freezing through the weekend. Mayor Bob Anderson from Good old Frostbite Falls. <laughs> I think I watched Rocky and Bullwinkle here back in the 60s. I believe you would have. And uh, the, the moose and the beaver and everyone was uh, with you. And the squirrel. And the so squirrel. You've been here all of your life. Yes. Uh, you're not wearing a hat, but that's okay. There's not much wind. But uh, tell us about how everybody just embraces the cold up here. Well, I think it's a challenge uh, that folks like to take on uh, when it's cold. They want to go out and see uh, what it's like and, and just uh, always have lived in it this way. And it keeps the southerners out of the, uh, out of the area, I think, for at least this time of the year. That's right. They're, uh, the riffraff doesn't want to come here. <laughs> well, this riffraff came up for a few days. Uh, what's ahead is the uh, icebox days. That's a big deal here in January. Yes. Yeah, we have a, a great uh, freezer gizzard blizzard run and uh, just a lot of activities around uh, being outside in the cold and enjoying it. And then you look forward to what is, I think, a spectacular summer up here, as long as you don't get frost in June. That's right. That's right. And once we get the ice off the lake, then uh, everything warms up. And I'm hearing that uh, tomorrow will be the first day they'll be able to cross uh, one of the lakes here. Yes, the uh, the ice is starting to form very well. So should be able to get out there and start walking on the ice pretty soon. And then some ice fishing and some fresh walleye. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Okay, Mayor Bob Anderson, thanks for having us up to International Falls. Welcome to the Weather Channel and all your viewers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Paul Goodlow, there you go. The freeze your gizzard blizzard run. Sounds like something you'd be into. First, I can't believe... Sans the, sans the gizzard. I, I can't believe that the mayor doesn't have a hat on. 
That's what's the amazing part of me. I mean, you have the, you have the hat, you have a hood. Oh, good Lord, doesn't he? Said, he can't believe you don't have a hat or hood on. Walked to school this way all of my life. So. Yeah, uphill. <laughs> yeah, uphill. Yeah. There you go, Paul. Yeah, you know, I've seen this time and time again. You've seen this up here. Uh, you really got to have a, a windshield of at least 30 below before they start wearing headgear. And you have to remember, he's he and I are out here only for about seven or eight minutes at a time. If you're going to be out here any longer, you've got to have, you've got to cover your ears. This is frostbite weather. Yes, it is. All right, Mike Sahel from a. Uh, chilly, frosty, frigid International Falls this morning. Thanks, Mike. Good morning from International Falls. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. It is a record-setting morning and bitterly cold even by the standards here in the falls. 13 below zero this morning. 13 below was a record yesterday. It's barely ever been this cold this early in the season. The locals are even uh, really talking it up because typically they get their snowfall, first snowfall, and it melts. This snow has been on the ground now for over a week. They've had over 13 inches of snow, officially six inches on the ground. And uh, we may get a little bit more snow, maybe a dusting or so uh, later today, primarily tonight and Saturday morning as some of the warm air tries to get back in. With that said, though, uh, it is not going to crack freezing until probably sometime on Monday afternoon. This, after all, is the icebox of America. And, you know, they're prepared for it. But when it hits this hard this early, uh, a lot of folks were kind of caught off guard. It's horrible. Um, first of all, I wasn't prepared at all, so I've been doing a lot of shoveling and finding lawn chairs and cushions and beanbag toss games. So, uh, yeah, I'm totally not prepared for it. And uh, come May, we're going to look back on this and be a little bit sad. Well, that's the thing. You have to wait till May up here to get some warm weather. That's not always the case. They have hit 70 in March. But uh, here in International Falls, they've actually dropped to freezing or below every month of the year. And the frost-free period generally is from early June to about mid-September. So it's a very short growing season for the tomatoes up here. Clouds rolling in again. Today's high about 20. Keep in mind the average high is 38. This morning we were 35 degrees below average. This is the coldest weather I've ever been in this early in the season. In fact, I'm thinking about it. This could be the coldest morning, Paul, I see all winter. I mean, it's not out of the question. Hadn't it been for the two Minnesota Vikings tailgates the past two Januaries, uh, this would easily be colder than any other weather I experienced the previous two winters if you take away those Vikings tailgates. So we'll see how it stands as we uh, look forward to next March. But if you look back, this could be it. I mean, it, it's not out of the question because, you know, most snowstorms occur generally when temperatures in the 20s into the low 30s. It's amazing, Mike, that you're still getting firsts. You know, you've been to the Weather Channel for, you know, 20-something years. It's, that's how significant this cold is this morning across the upper Midwest. Thanks. That's Mike Sadell live this morning in a frigid International Falls, uh, Minnesota. Good morning from International Falls, the icebox of America. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel, and the falls living up to its name this morning, especially considering it's only November 10th and a record low this morning of 13 below zero. The wind chill was 22 below. Uh, even up here, that's cold. That's 35 degrees colder than average. Remember, it's only November, only November 10th. Right now, it's warmed up to a balmy two degrees, and someone who knows that best is uh, Tricia Heibel from the Chamber of Commerce, the president, and again, another local who says no hat unless the wind chill is at least, what, 50 below. Well, now that we're warmed up to two, it's no point <laughs> going to get the hat out of the car now. Yeah, I'll put on my Bermuda shorts. Uh, let's talk about the uh, icebox days, because that's really the big draw up here in January. It is. That is our whole winter festival, January 17th through the 21st. We have all sorts of events and activities celebrating the cold, including a 5 and 10K race called the Freezer Gizzard Blizzard Run. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Freezer Gizzard Blizzard Run. You got or it. Or something like that. Freeze your gizzard blizzard. So it's 38th year of both the festival and the race. Never been canceled for the cold. And you also have the Frostbite Falls Golf uh, Tournament. We do. We do have a really fun golf event out on the frozen lake that's set up on Rainy Lake. We also have a boot hockey tournament and some other just kind of winter fun like frozen turkey bowling in the street. And the uh, hairs of Jay Ward would uh, 
would be happy if I once again mentioned Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yes, yes. <laughs> because it's all about Rocky and uh, Rocket J. Squirrel and Bullwinkle Jim, the moose and the squirrel. It is, it is. And right, it's, uh, right here in Frostbite Falls. Right, and, and this... Celebrating our record low temps, 55, 55 below zero. And believe it or not, not the coldest in the state. No. Tower, it's 60 no. below. I would probably have a hat on if it were 55 below. <laughs> 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 I'd have to go see my shrink. Okay, turn it around and give the folks an idea. This is a good-looking uh, fleece. I know we're trying to we're trying to sell these things. No, we're not actually doing it. But look at that. And and you were nice enough to give us. Uh one absolutely, each. absolutely. From the Chamber of Commerce, that's where they're available. International Falls Chamber. There you go. Celebrating yeah. Icebox of the Nation. And you have to mention that the summers up here are spectacular. They really are. Rainy Lake is uh, one of a kind, in my opinion. Voyagers National Park, a great way to get out there and explore the lake and see the islands. And really, why that's why we suffer through the winter, to celebrate summer. Okay. Well, thanks again, Trish. Thank you again, Mike. Thank you very much for having us. Paul Goodlow, summers are beautiful up here, except for the fact that it frosts into early June yeah. and starts back in mid-September. Other than that, come in around July 10th or 11th, you, you should be fine. You won't need the ice scraper. Summers are beautiful all three days of it there across parts <laughs> of the upper Midwest. Uh, Thanks. That is Mike Seidel <laughs> in uh, International Falls, Minnesota. I just can't get my mind around 55 below zero. I've been like in the teens below, but... Uh, Wow. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh, get inside. Stay warm there.